Opening day in Major League Baseball coincides with the Highland Racing League's first ever trip to the Kern County Raceway. Welcome back to the Westlake Royal Building Products Premier Series brought to you exclusively on FTN. The second half of the championship battle, we've now gotten to the turning point and after a dominant win from Lucas Lodano in Montreal, we're back in the United States for the opening day 166. 166 66 laps of racing celebrating Major League Baseball's return in 2024. It's a night of special paint schemes and exciting raceway here in Bakersfield, California. Welcome back live on FTN. I'm your host, David Troitz, alongside Alexander Balderas. And qualifying's on the move with three minutes of time remaining. You'll see everyone in the field, give or take, having a brand new special paint scheme. And qualifying already on the move with Alan Kunman at the top of the board in his number 88. And now... Now, as you look around, Corey Blevins and company getting their times in. Alex, we've just gotten things going here in Kern County after a week away from the circuits in the United States. We're back again. How does it feel to be back on home soil for tonight's race? It feels great. It feels back. It feels good to be here in the U.S. again, David. Our trip to Montreal certainly was a one for the books. Absolutely phenomenal race we saw over, uh, over the border up north. And now we're back down in sunny Bakersfield, California at Kevin Harvick's Kern County Raceway. Newly on the iRacing circuit, just released a couple months ago, seeing its first appearance here in Highline. And I got to tell you, David, I'm excited for this one. It's one of those tracks we have not gotten to see to this point. So very exciting to see everyone come into fruition. And we got a lot of brand new paint schemes to acknowledge. Michael Deitch going to be at the top of the track. Tyler Hampton is on his way. And I'll tell you this much, with Lucas Lodano's breakout win and Roberto Ramirez extending his championship lead, we're in for the remainder of the season, which is going to become even more exciting to watch the drivers at the top of the charts. Qualifying mattering more and more. Dylan Wedgwood jumps up to second. You got Gotta wonder what are these drivers gonna do to move up to the top of the charts here as we're waiting on a few drivers DJ Stagner, Ryan Potter, and Lucas Lodano included. Almost everyone else has taken the time, so we should be good to go in just a few moments. Yeah, and with that being said, it looks like the grid should probably be set. Only a couple of cars on the track. It's Scott Wheeler Jr., DJ Stagner, and Ryan Potter. DJ Stagner goes 21st after setting that lap. Corey Blevins up to 15th. Ryan Potter goes 14th. They are still driving on the racetrack. Scott Wheeler is not moving. DJ Stagner looking to get a better lap time than 21st on the board. And let's see where that lap puts him now. Up to second. What a lap from DJ Stagner. Just like that, Stagner going to move high. Ryan Potter in the wall and Corey Blevins still on the track. 50 seconds remaining here. DJ going to jump up and he's already looking for what could be his third win on the campaign for Stagner. He knows what it takes to have success here in the Highline Racing League. And it looks like now everyone except for Lucas Lodato has put in a time. And Lucas now heading onto the track with 30 seconds to go. Not quite sure if he'll get a lap here. Our defending race winner, he has returned to the circuit and now looking to get one lap in at the line he'll get there he should have time for just one here Alex and he's gonna spin it immediately that will end qualifying well 20 seconds left in qualifying and no one else is out on track to set a lap the only one who is still moving according to timing and scoring is Corey Blevins as he's still driving around getting some extra practice laps he's lining up 16th and uh, with five seconds left in qualifying we're gonna get ready to look at the grid and time to look at the grid as you mentioned here. Qualifying has concluded. And now we got a special opportunity to take it from top to bottom in our starting grid. And let's get the grid ticker out for us right now. Kern County going to come alive for 166 laps of racing. Here's a little bit more information about tonight's race. Four tire sets. That's the maximum plus the one you start on. So you have five sets throughout the entirety of this race. Going to be partly cloudy skies at 74 degrees Fahrenheit and 76 is the track temperature slightly warmer than the air but not going to be all too much with winds northbound at nine miles an hour and it looks like with that being said weather going to be stagnated all throughout the night 
5.5 miles, half a mile per lap. So it comes out to just under 83. And right now, drivers are getting set up on your grid from top to bottom. Let's get to see the who's who in the opening day, 166. At the top of the board, representing the Boston Red Sox, it will be Alan Cunman. And right beside him, it'll be the Raging Cajun number 64 of DJ Stagner. Then with Dylan Wedgwood running third and Scott Zellner running in fourth. Got two special paint schemes, the red, white, and blue Miller machine. That is going to be all for Tyler Hampton and his number five machine. Then you look right beside, and it's going to be the Missouri River Motorboaters. Those are the teams represented, and that's going to be the end of top four. You look right at Adam Bozzi finds himself there, he's going to be ending row number three. Then from there, you're going to see Kendall Curran, Casey Heschel, trying to keep our camera on these brand new paint schemes. It's going to be Heschel, who's going to be right beside. He is tonight in the number 49 machine with the pink numbering you can see. That is the Danville Dairy Daddies, and it's going to be the Pittsburgh Pirates for the number 21. That is, of course, Kendall Kerr. Rounding out the top ten tonight, it's going to be Jacob Hom and Jimmy McKee, and tonight, Hom and that number 76 machine. Going to have one of the special paint schemes on the market. That's going to be the Florence Yalls. And then from there to round out the top 10, it's going to be Jimmy McKee, his number 48, as we look through all of the teams listed. One also in the minor league system, and it looks like he unfortunately didn't give us the specific information. So McKee finds himself rounding out the top 10, and as he comes right by our cameras, you can see it there. Trying to read the name on it, it looks to be the Utter Tuggers in the 48. Alex, let's go from there. Going from there, Connor Holden repping my hometown, Houston Astros. Coming off of a challenge last season. Now, new opening. They lost today, but hopefully they can do better. Connor Holden can maybe make up for that loss today. Ryan Hines in the 25 machine. He lines up 12th. Then it's Terry Brooks and Ty Smith in the mix as well. Then going on, it's the 99 of Ryan Potter. And a lot of these guys in a mix of beautiful paint schemes who look back. You know, a mix of the different major and minor leagues. Then it's Corey Blevins and Dylan Pote in the Louisville number 31. Then it's going to be Colton Gardner in the 40. Kenny Brooks rounding out the 54 as we're green here from Kern. And green flag is out, led by the number 88 of Allen Cumman. He'll get the jump of the Red Sox Chevrolet. And on the move, we are in Kern County. Looks like right now, Cumman going to have the run up top. DJ Stagner going to cut the distance down low. Side by side, as the night goes on, we're going to show you all of the special paint schemes. Looks like the grid period a little bit shorter. It's a small track, and as such, DJ Stagner gets the lead, cutting right down low. So DJ gets out with a nice jump. You look from there, looks like... Whoa! Hampton trouble. In trouble. Hampton spins. Hampton spins down the back stretch. He'll make contact with the inside wall, and that will bring out the first yellow as he toes to pit road. Now, thankfully, Tyler Hampton didn't get anyone else involved, but as such, we are out under caution, and I think that's Hampton's night already just about done, and he's going to bring us back under pacing. Take a look back this time, and you'll see what just caused it. Yellow flag is out. Here's the look again, as it's going to be Tyler Hampton's number five that goes spinning at a two. And it's like he just got loose and shot it down low. Yeah, you know, and it's it's opening lap of a track the series hasn't been to. And so it's a lot of the unknown. A lot of these guys don't really know what they're stepping into. Just practice laps to go off of and then really fast ones in it qualifying. So a lot of these guys really stepping into the unknown here in uh, Kearns County. Just like that, first incident of the day. We were not really done looking through all of our other paint schemes in tonight's event. You see, there's another Boston Red Sox machine right behind the aforementioned Corey Blevins. That's going to be Scott Wheeler, and he's also running the number 97. That one a little more reminiscent of the paint scheme seen in June of 2007 on Carl Edwards, number 60, I believe, in the Nationwide Series. So that's a little bit more of a similar paint scheme. You look back to Andrew Baker in the number 33, another driver who's going to be running with the minor league 
Knicks tonight and that number 33 you can see the curve represented there for Andrew Baker furthermore you're going to see Colton Gardner and his number 40 looks like for Brad Crest tonight he's got another special paint scheme on and for Crest as he comes around this time by you'll get a much clearer look of what he's representing it's going to be the flying squirrels tonight for the number nine all the while Chad Winstead is going to represent the Atlanta Braves Toby Wedgwood the Los Angeles Dodgers Lucas Ladano going to be getting out of pit road right now Caleb Morrissey on the move and Tyler Hampton 26 Michael Deitch with the New York Mets paint scheme does not make it to the green flag and we are now one lap to green We'll head to green here, here in Kern. DJ Stagner still leads over Alan Kunman. Dylan Wedgwood is in third. Then it's Scott Zellner in fourth. The Raging Cajun Machine leads over the Boston Red Sox. And it looks like now Stagner going to get back in control for our first restart of the night pretty early with our very small first stint. Now going to try to get into a rhythm here. DJ got away nicely on the bottom side and that might be indicative of how the rest of this race goes. Keep in mind low groove here with the banking. It's much like a track like Richmond. You can make any groove work. Just depends about how you approach it. Green flags out for our first restart of the night. DJ's got it on the bottom and Kunman going to stay even through one and two these two battle got out hard now Kunman wants that spot over Stagner he's going to slide all the way to the outside wall they're going to be side by side coming across the front straight away still give it to the 64 as Stagner as he leads but Kunman isn't going to give up that easily he's going to get that run off the top side lane he leads going into three and four by a bumper can he get the run off three and four to clear Stagner he's not clear just yet but give the lead to Kunman because he stole it from the 64 at the line so now it's going to be that number 88 of Kunman oh, trying trouble. to work it cautions out again David and I believe it's a spin by Ty Smith oh and give it to I believe it was I was correct in Ty Smith he may have Spun in the back. Problems with that left front. So multiple cars involved again as the caution's out on lap nine. And in addition, it's going to involve Jacob Hom, the number 76. Caution is out. We saw Hom go around on our broadcast feed. Also going to involve Ty Smith. Here's an instant look back, and you'll figure out just a bit more by taking a watch here. So Hom going to be up on the top side, and he's going to be in the y'all's machine tonight. He's up high, wiggles off the corner, gets down the curve, front straightaway. It tries to come down low to Smith, and it's going to be the Carolina Space Cowboys number 18 that goes spinning, and so does Jacob Hom there too. So two cars that go for a slide, few others that just barely get away, and the caution is out. 11 laps in out of 166. That is our second caution of the day, and we are once again pacing here. Alan Cunman has the lead, and he has the choice to perhaps go another route to the bottom side maybe now he'll choose it as we are set to go in about two laps time david bell member of the channel for over a month thank you for stopping by great to have you here and hope you enjoyed tonight's racing it's a double header on ftn road to pro i believe they just got finished and it was a fantastic race there Richmond, another short track, a bit larger than this one, but all the same, an exciting one. The Boston Red Sox, number 88 of Alan Cumman, leads the way. And when we talk about the Red Sox and iRacing, it's only fitting that we have that number 88 up at the front of the field. For those who don't know, the 88... The team represented the Boston Red Sox are owned by the Fenway Group and alongside other collaborations such as work with Roush and their RFK program, iRacing started in large part due to funding from John Henry who controls the Fenway Group and as such very involved Fenway is with the starting of our iRacing platform here and the Boston Red Sox. So a little bit of history there, Alan Cunman, the number 88, representing some of the people involved in making this incredible simulator a reality. That's a little bit of history about Fenway, iRacing, and the Red Sox and we will go back to watching the action. Emma Oxen chat room for the 27 of Adam Bob Bozzi. And tonight, Bozzi, one of the drivers with a very interesting name. I'll tell you that much. These minor league teams, not all of them have the generic names of their major league partners. And for Adam Bozzi, that is nowhere near the case, Alex. we got a lot of names to learn, even if we watch the sport together. 
Yeah, and you're right about that, David. You know, getting into baseball quite here soon, like myself, having to do a little bit of research going into here. But as you mentioned, you know, there's a little history with Kahneman leading in the 88, sponsored by the Red Sox. You know, 17 years in iRacing history, been around, been around as long as me. And uh, got to tell you, David, seeing that up there leading, it's quite special. And we'll see whether or not he's able to hold it as our race leader. Everyone gets stacked up, and this time around, DJ Stagner going to fall to the back of the field. Looks like a choose cone violation, and as such, he will head to the tail end of the pack. Cunman in control. He'll stay top, and Dylan Wedgwood's going to be down on the bottom. Pace car down and in, and time to get rolling once again at lap 15. A little bit of a stack up there with Holden and company, but the Cunman machine comes through, and it's already in Allen's hand. Hands up in front. Gunman able to get the jump off the restart now as we look back further through the field. As for the battle for second, it's Scott Zellner and Dylan Wedgwood. These two going side by side across the front stretch. They go side by side, entering through one and two. Wedgwood slides up the track a little bit, but Zellner not giving him any room on the top. He will try and make it work. Getting that run off the exit of the corner. Then looking back a little further, just behind them, it's the 49 of Casey Heschel and the 27 of Adam Bozzi. These guys are all grouped together here for the second restart as Wedgwood slides up a little and hits the left rear of the one. He's going to get that run on the outside now and he'll pass the 98. But here comes Casey Heschel. These two side by side off the exit of the corner. Wedgwood slides and give it to the 49. And right now, Dylan Wedgwood going to find himself stuck on the bottom side. And it looks like now maybe that middle groove coming into its own. One big mover so far is Terry Brooks from 13th up to 6. And the Disco Turkey's number 23. He's made his way quite far up the pack. Right now, Kendall Kerr, Jimmy McKee, the teammates are fighting each other. And the Pittsburgh Pirates, number 21, up to the top side. Right now, it's going to be the 48 low. Ryan Hines slightly in the wall. That'll help out with Scott Wee as he goes to the bottom side and Dylan Poteet's Louisville Bats paint scheme now going to make up another spot as his Ford Mustang takes it right beside Hines. Up in the front of the field you'll see a little bit more of that side-by-side -side action for the podium but overall for Cummins and Zellner they've got away quick and they've tried to stay away. You really don't want to be involved with all the battling given how short this track is in distance. Well there's a lot of room for a half mile track. It might look larger than a track like Bristol or Martinsville by no means is it spacious so if one driver ends up caught in a bind it's going to affect multiple lovers and the chain reaction especially at the front of the field is going to be a very big deal and right now it looks like Dylan Wedgwood still getting hammered trying to keep that position but not going to be easy as he's sent to the top side this time through and now Bozzi with a nice run on the bottom with all that banking he's using he's going to keep it there and try to take the spot away been a consistent fight for about five, six laps now and still going with Terry Brooks also putting a little more pressure. Well, as you mentioned, David, you know, it's a half mile long and while it looks a little bit bigger than uh, Bristol and Martinsville, you mentioned how it's not very spacious and I gotta agree with you on that. You know, just because it's a wider track, that gives more area for cars to be parked sideways across the track as we saw in the yellows early on. Longest green flag run we've had so far and this battle between Wedgwood, Bozzi, and Brooks has been heating up for the past couple of laps. And now to the inside goes the 21 of Kendall Kerr. He's going to go to the inside of Terry Brooks off the final corner. And off the front stretch, these two groups are going to be side by side, both for the podium and for the top five spot as well. These two battling it out hard. Bozzi makes up the spot. The battle between Kendall Kerr and Terry Brooks is not over. These two are side by side. Kerr, slow off the exit of the corner. He'll slot back behind the 23. And now it's going to be Kendall Kerr looking low. Previously, it was Jimmy McKee was on that bottom side. That's no longer the case here as they come off the back straightaway. Once again, 26 laps in out of 166. And in the early going of this race, everyone getting into a nice little trying to fill up in the packs and such. But not going to be all too easy here if we see a few more of those cautions come out. Going to be a very delicate balance for these drivers of aggression and risk-taking. And you do not want to make these mistakes 
Knights. It looks like now the number 48 up to the top side. Jimmy McKee gets the run on Kevin Curry again. And now he takes the pass, takes the spot, and Scott Wheeler coming with. It's going to be the 81 of Connor Holden way high. And it looks like nearly the wall for Holden, but he keeps it all together. And there isn't much issue as they come off the corner again. There's about three packs right now. I would say the first of which is going to be your podium. Then you look back to the drivers from 4th to about 11th. Then 13th on back is Ryan Hines and company. And they're all working each other over here side by side. Looks like Chad Winstead and Corey Blevins. Blevins gets the better of Chad for a brief moment. However, it looks like he'll fade back. And now Winstead looking at Ryan Hines as they fight for 13th. Leaders got away, but the second pack is still fighting. Now Dylan Pote is to the bottom side. And it's going to be the 81 of Holden who ends up at the top. Give it some hope for Holden there as he's left from the hometown Houston Astros. Hopefully, yeah, he can come back to the field and maybe get somewhere close to victory lane. But by no means is 11th a bad running spot right now. Yes, he's in the middle of the pack. But being top 11, top 10, especially at a new track like Kern, going to be a good start for some of these guys. And I think that he can convert what is a good start so far. Able to miss the opening wrecks and to get through the opening restarts. Something not to be said by a majority of the drivers in the back half of the pack. So far, closest battle in this group right now, Kendall Kerr closing on Jimmy McKee. With Scott Wheeler Jr. in the mix as well. Wedgwood now under fire from Terry Brooks. These two are going to go side by side entering one and two. And down to the inside goes the 23 of Terry Brooks. He'll be side by side off the corner and down the back. Is the 23 going to be clear off the corner? He sends it in, but that 98 is going to get a run off the top side. And now it's going to be Terry Brooks facing that pressure. He'll stay low. Wedgwood, who's been up high for quite a while now by forces, trying to make it a good option here as he runs off the corner once again. Coming across the back straightaway, it's going to be now that number 98 working high and still trying to get it going. But now Jimmy McKee going to apply some pressure. And if he loses this spot to Wedgwood, it's almost a guarantee that Jimmy McKee is going to have a good shot as they come into the back straightaway here. Add a two again. It looks like now... Terry Brooks almost fully clear, but he just has to make it through down to the inside. He's got it. Now Jimmy McKee going to be right up next, and it's going to be a downward spiral. That number 98 can't get in the line. Looks like he just did there, so only going to lose one spot. McKee, though, saw the opportunity, and we'll see whether or not he chooses to do anything with it as the race progresses. Well, Wedgwood knows that these guys are going to battle hard here. This is a battle for that fifth spot. A top five spot on the marking for all of these drivers backed in from about fifth all the way to about ninth or so. So these guys in the mix from not only halfway in the top ten, but through the bottom half of the top ten. So these guys running single file right now. A couple of battles mixed in. And Scott Weaver Jr. started to look to the inside of the 21 of Kendall Kerr. Peeking inside, but thinking better of it. He'll stay right behind as Jimmy McKee slides up the track. And now Kendall Kerr will have, do, will have to do battle with the number 48 as they get it sorted out single file once again. Single file up in front as well as we're looking at Scott Zellner and Casey Heschel. You look right now at Zellner who's about three tenths off of our second place driver. Casey making it up from eighth already. And even though it's been a quiet run following our first two cautions, really not much to speak of there. Heschel made all the moves necessary in the very short time allotted and as such doesn't really have to worry all too much about drivers coming after his positions as a very firm position established the second pack going to be several seconds away and for now it looks like a podium going to be locked up until the next caution flies and which it does andrew baker and colton gardner look to be involved and the yellow flag is out ryan potter going to go spinning let's take a look back here and figure out what caused it caution is out and it looks like ryan potter the cause well, we made it to lap 40 david before the caution had come out and then looks to be around went Ryan Potter. Let's take a look to see what happened. You can see there just behind the 99. Oh, and he'll just lose it under braking. And he will slide up the racetrack. So that will bring out the caution on lap 40. Single car half spin will bring out the yellow. Just a safety caution, I think, given the uh, distance of the circuit. However, 
not a major deal just gonna get everyone wrapped up once again and now pit road is busy taking a look at everyone coming through you're looking at your pit exit camera right now and it's gonna be a side-by-side -side battle i think zellner is the first man out then gonna be casey heschel and a big jump there as the number 49 no longer going to have the advantage. It looks like Scott Zellner ahead of Heschel, Caleb Morrissey, and Alan Cummins. The only drivers left out on the circuit. And just like that, big difference. Morrissey up to second. Cunman remains your leader, both of which on old rubber. Well, you got to wonder, David, what might be the plan here for Alan Cummins or Caleb Morrissey with the plan to stay out after that semi-long green flag run we had from lap 20 to lap 40 so around there so we had about maybe 30 or uh, sorry we probably had about 23 laps of green flag running and curves not the highest banked short track but it is banked high enough to where you might see a little more wear on your tires than every other average short track but that all depends on how hard these guys are going up front and a difference in strategy, I may think that this might work. A lot of track position gain for the six of Caleb Morrissey. The biggest gamble of the night so far, I'd argue, and we're about a quarter of the way through. So we'll see whether or not this can carry Caleb Morrissey for the next quarter. That being said, always going to be an opportunity, and we'll see whether or not it's worth taking. Kern County, not the smoothest of surfaces. If we take a look on board with Caleb Morrissey now, as a matter of fact, and you'll see the distinct grooves and a little bit of wiggling up and down with some bumps in the track, notably as you look through three and four, a little bit of elevation with some of these hiccups in the middle of the corner and then coming back onto the straightaway. It's not going to be easy for old rubber, but maybe that temperature is going to be the big advantage here as Morrissey has a younger set than Allen coming and could use Allen as a buffer if he's able to get by and make that pass work out that all remains to be seen as Caleb Morsey is going to be down to the bottom side is Alan coming right up top time to get things going once again Cunman in control but this time on a different strategy the rest of the field remains behind him and we're going to figure out now who's got what it takes as we set to return this time by at a turn for Alan Cunman with the advantage does he get a nice jump though it looks like he will Caleb Morrissey not so much Cunman's got the lead and he takes control as we go through for our third restart of the night down the back stretch and there goes Alan Cunman he has the lead over Zellner but Zellner has caught up quite a large bit and here he goes, Cunman falling back on a rapper rate, sinking like a rock. And for the lead goes Zellner. He's able to take it. I believe there might be a bit of that caution is out again. Toby Wedgwood going to be involved this time with Kenny Brooks. And you're right, caution is out again. Let's take an instant replay and figure out what happened here. I think the rest of these cautions are going to have single file restarts if we're looking at it properly. So the instant replay will show you who just got involved. The yellow flag is out. Looks like Toby Wedgwood going to be in it. And as they came across turn four this time by, this is the lap prior to the caution. Looks like Wedgwood going to be there. Back of field. Contact with Corey Blevin. Sends him high. And Kenny Brooks slows down. Nobody else makes contact, but it's going to be just about a full spin for Toby Wedgwood, and the yellow flag is out once again. Well, David, I'm interested to see how these guys are going to react now off of different pitch strategies as Kahneman got passed with the lead by Zellner. Does he come in this time by with the caution, or does he not? He would lose the least amount of time by coming in now rather than under green. That's all going to be up to him. Morrissey drops four spots all the way back to fifth. And so a lot of these guys, the two people that stayed out, starting to fall back. I think that raw pace is what is keeping Alan Cunman up there, even with the yellow. Yeah, Caleb Morrissey, despite the fact he's got a younger set, not as quick overall, qualified 23rd to Alan Cunman's pole position. So the speed might not be there based on the tires, but also... Cunman, definitely one of the stronger drivers at this track overall. And that plays in his favor, even on that different strategy. So for 
Caleb Morrissey, not quite sure what the plan is going to be. It looks like some minor damage on the right side as well, so keep an eye out for that. The number six has a lot to go through here. It's going to be an uphill climb to keep position all the while. Gunman, not really a big enough sample of laps to figure out whether or not he's really going to lose here. Maybe he'll stay in second. Maybe he'll stay up inside the top five for a certain amount of laps that gets him perhaps to our next pit cycle. Might be worth it for him because we only have four sets of tire down on pit road. You don't want to use them early. It's a strict limitation. One of the strictest we've seen all season. So he'll keep himself out there as opposed to using up his stuff early. And we'll figure out whether or not that's the right move as the race progresses. It'll be interesting to see because a lot of these guys who have those fresher tires are going to eat up Kunman. But I wonder what they're going to do. Or sorry, they're going to eat up uh, Morrissey, but I wonder if they're going to eat up Kunman as well. Because he was able to sort of fend off Zellner for a while until the caution came out and Zellner has sent it in to take the lead. So the matter of fact of how far Kunman will drop back will be decided on if these guys decide to go green or if there is another quick yellow. Time to get going once again. It's going to be one lap to green. Kunman going to be down on the bottom side. He's looking low. Scott Zellman right up top. And Terry Brooks going to find himself in the third position on that second row. Caleb Morris is going to be just behind. He and Casey Heschel here. And we'll see whether or not the old tires work out to stay inside the top five. The possibility, but we don't quite know whether or not it's a guarantee. Zellner has the lead, looking for his first win this season. Your defending champion gets the start. Everyone else checks up. It's a scramble into one and two, but we stay clean and green. Morrissey up top, going to slow down substantially, and Zellner gets it back to the point. Morrissey in the wall in the middle of the field. No caution. He scrapes it, but now dropping further back is coming. He gets past by Terry Brooks. Here comes Casey Hessel. The number 49, he'll drop it down to the inside, and these guys fall back like a rock, and there goes Wedgwood. Dylan Wedgwood are hard into the outside wall. He will collect a car, and I believe it was Morrissey. Involved as well, Adam Bozzi. Caution is out once again. Let's take a look back and figure out what caused it. I think we're going to look back here, and we're going to see a lot of things going on all at once. Let's take a look at Dylan Wedgwood. He was racing there in the middle of the pack, gets loose, and tags the right rear, or tags the left rear of Adam Bozzi, slides right up the track, and I believe he blew his motor. And uh, I believe with more racing from Kern County in just a second. As we were just going into our caution there, a little bit of an incident involving, among others, Adam Bozzi, Dylan Wedgwood, and Caleb Morsey, and an incident inside the studio as well. Whatever the case, we're fine for the time being, and we'll return momentarily. Alex, you've got a copy. How are we doing? Well, good to hear. We're going to get the racing feed back on in just a second here, loading up momentarily. And the opening day, 166, continuing our exciting action here in the Highline Racing League. If you can, Alex, give us the play-by-play, -play and we'll let you know when we're back. Casey Heschel ahead of Jimmy McKee is Scott Wheeler Jr. now fighting in the mix as well. That sixth place car of Connor Holden fighting now with the 31 of Dylan Pote. Now the 21 of uh, the 21 of Kendall Kerr being fought by the seven of Lucas Ladano now is they're going to be side by side going down the back straightaway. They're going to make contact. Ladano is going to slide. He's going to be able to save it. As he has an impeccable save down the back straightaway, they get it all fixed at going through three and four. Moving back throughout the rest of the field, second closest battle going to be in the mix here. DJ Stagner making his charge way back up, doing battle with the 60 of Chad Winstead. That's the battle for the 10th spot as down to the inside goes to 64. The caution's going to wave again. And it was an incident between the 76 and the 54. That's going to be Kenny Brooks and Jacob Hom. We're going to take another look at it here to see what we can look at for the cause of the caution.
And so what's going to happen here for all the viewers listening is that the 40 is going to tag the 76. Kunman almost gets involved. Jacob Hom comes straight up the track and hits the left side of the 54 of Kenny Brooks. So a lot of cars and a lot of stuff happening right now. Doesn't look like a lot of damage there on the 54 and mixed. So we'll be under caution once again. Scott Zellner leads over Terry Brooks and Casey Heschel. Then it's Jimmy McKee and Scott Wheeler Jr. to round out your top five. Scott Wheeler Jr. has a little bit of damage on his back bumper near where it says the Fenway scoreboard for the Boston Red Sox. Because now we have another Red Sox car within the top five after Kunman dropped back due to his pit stop. Now, Connor Holden, repping the Houston Astros, my hometown team, is up into the top six. And going on further from there, it's going to be Dylan Poteet in that seventh spot. Going down the rest of the order, it's Kendall Kerr, Lucas Lodato, Chad Winstead rounding out that top ten. DJ Stagner, Andrew Baker, Ryan Hines. And then to continue on from them, it's Brad Kress, Colton Gardner, Ryan Potter, Adam Bozzi, Kenny Brooks, Alan Cunman, Toby Wedgwood, and then Jacob Hom, Corey Blevins, and then Ty Smith, who I believe is completely out of this race. Corey Blevins might be out of the race as well. So the last car that we have timing and scoring, 76 of Jacob Hom. Well, with that being said, Alex, we're back in here and 68 laps in, cautioned flying. We're getting paint schemes back on, and right now for Scott Zellner, he's got the race lead. Thank you all for sticking with us here as we return from a brief power outage in the studio. All the same, we are back, and it is, once again, time for Kern County Racing. The opening day, 166, has not been without incident, and we're once again under caution. As a result, Scott Zellner has control of the field. Then from there, you're going to see Brooks and Heschel the top three and you were talking about Scott Wheeler so we'll take a look on board with the man behind him in Connor Holden a little bit of a crush up there on the green monster the Fenway Park back bumper and of course the most iconic outfield wall in all of baseball it is the green monster and the towering fence that surrounds the entirety of the outfield in Fenway and it's one of the very few analog scoreboards we have still left in the sport so many of them are digital to this point with towering screens. However, of course, Fenway Park, which was built over 100 years ago, one of only two stadiums left from that time, and Wrigley Field being the other, remains with the analog tradition as we return again live from Kern. It's going to be Terry Brooks right down low and Scott Zellner on top. Green flags out this time by 69 laps in. Zellner with a nice jump. We're back on the way. Zellner able to get a really nice jump. Now goes to the inside, Terry Brooks. He gets to that second spot and passes the 49 of Casey Heschel. Jimmy McKee looking to be in the battle as well as Scott Wheeler Jr. going right behind that number 48. He's not going to be clear as they slide up through the exit of the corner. Now going into one and two, they're going to be side by side. The 97 doing door-to-door -door battle with the 81 of Connor Holden. They're going to rub as Dylan Poteet shoves Kendall Kerr in the number 21 in the wall and chad winstead able to get by dj stagner as dj stagner dropping and falling like a rock he will fall all the way back to 13th not a great restart for the 64. so now dj stagner might have a bit of trouble we're continuing to watch him drop here in the raising occasion number 64 clearly having some trouble ryan potter a little bit of contact there and almost getting into brad crest twice over alan cunman now going to be at the back of the field and it looks like for cunman not working out in that alternate strategy he fades back to 15th caleb morrissey appears to be out of this event as well so with that being said for the drivers who stayed out that one time it looks to have made all the difference as ryan potter is going to wiggle once more and he's not having an easy time in the slightest wiggle slightly up the track and the Canapolis Cannonballers 54 of Kenny Brooks gonna almost face some contact as well down to the bottom side you'll see Potter gonna nudge and shove him again trying to get that run makes the clear and he's got it 75 laps in all the while up in front Scott Sellner, who was champion last season in a dominant performance in the Gen 4s, still looking for his first win this season. He is out in front. And Terry Brooks, we've waited to see him break through for several seasons. He's particularly quick at these short tracks like Five Flags, Richmond, and the like. 
He's still looking for win number one in the FTN era, and we could see Brooks break through if he just gets one more position. 76 laps in. It's possible this is Brooks Knight. 25 slides up the track. DJ Stack, they're able to make the move, followed by Cunman in the 88. They're going to go through one and two right now as chops the nose. The 88 goes Stagner. He'll get right in front of Alan Cunman and stop his run as he's not able to get by at the 25. Stagner, after having a not great restart, looking to be on the charge again to gain the spots that he lost. Right now having to do battle with the 11th spot driver, 33, Andrew Baker. He is in the number 33 Chevy as he will try to make his way through. And now right leading this train of cars right now is the 81 of Connor Holden. And hold right now, going to face a little bit of pressure from Andrew Baker on the bottom side. The 33 going to try to get in. One driver going to spin as Ryan Potter cautions out. And Potter, another half spin is going to cause the yellow flag. And we are once again under yellow taking a look back and for ryan potter it looked to be a simple half spin that made all the difference here so take a look one more time 30 second replay and you'll see how it came to be it looks like a, another very similar incident potter struggling with control previously and it all comes down to this well i don't know david i think bozzy may have given him a little bit of a tap there because that back bumper sure looks beaten i'm gonna get another look at it here but i think bozzy may have had a little bit of help in that and maybe it touched the back end of the 99. Going to get a different camera angle so I can really see the issue here. And Bozzi taps the left rear of the 99. And the 99 will half spin and one and two again. Assistance for the 27. And riding on board with Adam Bozzi, I'd have to say, yes, that is the case. So Bozzi going to be involved with Ryan Potter. And if it wasn't enough trouble for Adam Bozzi, rather, Ryan Potter, Adam Bozzi made it a little bit worse. And 81 laps in, we are coming up on halfway. Action here in the FTN studios back live. You're watching the opening day 166. And for those of you just tuning in, I'm David Kreutz alongside Alexander Balderas. And right now, it's an exciting race that's only gotten to its halfway point. We've still got a ways to go. If you've got any drivers you'd like to support for all tonight's racing, make sure to shout them out in the chat room here in FTN. If you subscribe, you get unlimited chat room access. And as always, using the chats here are free and hopefully very fun as we'd like to read out every one of your messages we thank beyond and emma ox for stopping by in the chat room already as we return to the racing if you have anyone else you'd like to shout out fans make sure to let us know as we are once again just about a lap away from going green here scott zellner looking very good for his first win of the season a potential opportunity for zellner to get back as your season 16 champion terry brooks looking for his first win this season as well jimmy mckee the dominant man in season Season 15, he's been on a bit of a wind drought ever since. Maybe a chance to return and season 14 champion Scott Wheeler. He's also right inside the top five. Casey Heschel with a win already this campaign. He's been quite good at these short tracks. He's up there as well. Alex, a lot of good drivers up in front. And I'll tell you this much, pit road strategy already coming back into play. Lodato, Winstead, Baker, Hom, and Holden. They just went in within the past two laps. Well, David, I'm here to tell you that pit road strategy could not come to a better head than almost halfway, I believe actually halfway, in this race, we just hit the halfway marker. So, splitting the race in two segments, some of these guys are going to come in now, and that pit strategy is going to come into play. Some of these guys able to maybe make it on fuel for the rest of the race, and now those fresh tires. Who can be able to cut up through the field the fastest and really use those new tires efficiently, we'll have to see as we get ready to go green. And time to go once again. The number 23 of Terry Brooks on the bottom side. It's Zellner up top, and Scott gets the jump. Green flags out once again. It's going to be Zellner high, who looks to the bottom, and already going to be a little bit of stacking up two by two, maybe even three wide to ride on board with Alan Kunman, and he's in the middle of the minefield with DJ Stagner up top. Kendall Kerr right down low. Almost contact there with DJ, but all goes well as they get away, and just like that, jumping out through and through 86 laps in out of 166 we're into the second half of this event 
Penman got right up to the back bumper of the 64 of Stagner now as these guys continue to sort of stack up to the center of the corner. Differences in its center speed, and that's where those different tires come into play, David, as these guys... Oh, in trouble! Lucas Lodato spins. He'll go around in one and two, and he will be... He'll get going again. Caution is out. So taking a look back, Lodato, a very similar placement, a very similar incident. It looks like the dreaded half spin has come upon the number seven. Is there help here? Yep, it's Kenny Brooks this time, and some door-to-door -door contact leaves the seven stranded up high. Yellow flag is out again. This time it's going to be Lodato and Kenny Brooks making the contact, and we are once again in trouble under yellow with 79 laps remaining. Tevin Norman in the chat room, we thank you for stopping by and supporting Toby Wedgwood, the number 52 LA Dodgers machine running now in 16th and if uh, our good friend Andrew Schulte is watching, I'm sure he'd love to see a little bit more of this car on the broadcast who made our fantastic overlays tonight. He's an LA Dodgers fan, looks like Toby Wedgwood is too. Good screen time here for the number 52 who represents the West Coast and their super team of very, very talented players, regardless of controversy. 78 laps to go here, 89 in the books, and Casey Heschel is up in front. Casey Heschel will lead us over Jimmy McKee and Dylan Pote, and then it's Kendall Kerr and DJ Stagner, your top five. And now this top five is quite interesting because Stagner was able to cut his way to the field somewhat and start to pass people on this run. And now he finds himself fifth, closest to the lead he's been in a while. And with this restart getting up closer sooner than ever, I think he's ready to go and charge back up to the lead, David. And there's an opportunity, of course, for him to charge back up here. But the question really begun to once again be all about strategy. Winstead going to be up to 12th on a 9-lap old set. All the while, every driver in front of him is on a 90-lap old set. It's a huge difference, and I'll tell you this much, for Chad Winstead, what a race it would be if he finds himself back in a victory lane on an oval. Ran very well last week in Montreal. He's one of the better-known road course guys. He has a win from Mid-Ohio in Season 14. However, a year and a half since, he's only found victory lane at an oval from that point onward, and that was at Michigan last season, a fantastic lap lap last lap pass. Now for Winstead, the big goal for this number 60 campaign is that versatility, and I think right now 26 to 12th on the best strategy for the rest of the race, maybe? There's an opportunity. I think from this point onward, Winstead might have an advantage until about the 30 laps go, marker where we expect everyone to come in, potentially for their final pit stop is because of that tire limit. See whether or not Winstead keeps the advantage, but right now he's in good standing as you'll see Casey Heschel go high and McKee go low. Once again, two by two, we will stay as drivers come right by the choose line. Well, which lanes that people pick are going to be interesting now is because this will set the pace of the race and the pace of this restart. You know, Poti commenting on what a front row that we have. Front rows, Casey Heschel and uh, Jimmy McKee. Then Dylan Poteet, Kendall Kerr, and Kunman now in that fifth spot as he takes that outside lane. DJ Stagner will start on the inside in sixth. So time to get going once again. It's going to be the Dairy Daddies up in front with Casey Heschel. Green flag and to give it back to the 49. That's about a tenth and a half jump, if not more, on Jimmy McKee. And once again, your leader on the high side gets the bolt through. It's going to be the fastest jump for Heschel this race. And now it's going to be McKee looking to pick up the pieces as he's going to blink out just a bit. And the rest of the field is due to follow. Kevin Kerr side by side now with Dylan Bote. Poteet now as Kendall Kerr slides. He goes up the track now side by side with the 31. They go down the back straightaway as Kunman and Stagner also in the mix as well. With a double file behind them, Stagner slides, but he'll save it. The 31 now trying to make the pass from the outside of Kendall Kerr. Gets really close to the side of the 21, but he won't be able to get the momentum in order to make the pass. Running that higher lane that really no one else runs. Going to get that run off the exit of the corner, and he'll be passed by the 21 instead. Just like that, down to the bottom side, you're looking at Dylan Poteet on the Red Sox number 88. Oh, trouble! Cunman touches the right rear of the 31 of Dylan Poteet. 
He will go down to the apron. They're three wide with Stagner. Take a look at Kenny Brooks, the number 54. He started in 19th. This is the highest he's run all day long. Kenny Brooks is making moves and now finds himself side by side in a dead heat with Dylan Poteet on the high side. Working well now for the number 54 as he's making gains and trying to slot into line, hoping that Brad Crest doesn't get in his way. Just clear, but won't be enough to slot down and in. Brooks keeps it up top, and now we got a much different look to this race as Kenny's in the wall, and now Brad Crest with a chance to get down low and make a pass once again. 69 laps to go, and nicely done for Casey Heschel on that restart. He's gotten away, but the rest of the field has only gotten even closer. And now they're going to be three wide following the 54. Scott Zellner up through the middle. Will he be able to make the move? Still three wide middle. He's going to slide up the track, push the 54 out of the way, and he might push his nose three and four wide again. And here comes Zellman. He's going to try and make a charge, and I think he will. Now having to do battle with the 27. Vanna Buzzy, Lodato gets spun off the exit of two, and he will go around. Not a great homecoming night for Lucas Lodano. Caution is out again, and his return to the United States has not been as successful as his trips out of it. Let's take a look at the number seven one more time. It looks like he's going to get spun around here, as you described, Alex. And here is a look. Lucas Lodano, contact with Andrew Baker, and when Baker came up the track, that's what got him. And number seven ends up catching a piece. Takers down pit road. It's going to be the 88 of Cunman, DJ Stagner, and Jimmy McKee. They all come down pit road, and now that changes things quite a bit because Zellner gains a couple more spots as he originally had those fresh tires from earlier, and now he has less cars to pass. So hopefully this is a more efficient way for him to get up to the lead again. Now there's very few drivers on the older set of rubber that's gone 35 plus laps in Heinz, Bozzi, Kress, Poteet, Kerr, and Casey Heschel in ascending order with Heschel, your leader. Scott Zellner on a 13 lap run, looking at a very, very good position as he's got himself up in the seventh year. Chad Winstead still not in the bad spot himself in eighth, and Terry Brooks finds himself ninth. Scott Wheeler going to be 10th, and Andrew Baker 11th, with Ryan Potter 12th, and Lucas Lodato them in 13th. And right now, even more who come down in, Jimmy McKee just got back with the pack, so he's in another different position. 23 drivers are still going. Your last retiree was Caleb Morrissey, and he retired just about 50-odd laps ago go with 64 still on the table. Casey Heschel is up in front. Kendall Kurt second and Dylan Poteet in third. Alex once again different look with strategy as the field once again changing a bit more with another wave down and in. Well pit road cycle and pit road here at Kern County seems to be interesting as a lot of people don't really have an idea of what the pit strategy might be. We've got a different takers down pit road for fuel and tires. Going to be a mix. Scott Zellner is still in that seventh spot. I believe he may lead the guys on those newer tires. So he only has six cars to pass. Then it's Chad Winstead and Terry Brooks in the mix as well. Scott Wheeler Jr. and Andrew Baker as well. He rounds out 11th, and that's your top five on new tires. So a different look when it comes to those on brand new rubber, and you got to wonder with 63 laps to go, who's got the big advantage right now? Maybe Scott Zellner's the man in the sweet spot in seventh here, but as we come through this time by two by two, Kendall Kerr opts the bottom, and it's going to be Casey Heschel right up top. The number 49 holds it high, and he's set to lead us back to the green flag this time through. The sun has been perpetually setting all night long, and overall weather conditions not all too different from where we began it looks like the exact same numbers with the track temperature coming in at 76 fahrenheit so track temp hasn't been too terrible for these drivers and they've worked nicely with it so far but you gotta wonder are the old tires given out here because guys like zellner and winstead they're coming in that fourth row Heschel, once again a jump start out and he's gonna blind the field as he gets back to the lead in one and two Side by side, that's the battle for second. Bozzi over Kendall Kerr. Now here comes Bozzi. He's going to slide all the way to the racetrack and cautions out again. 
They spin in the back off of three and four, and someone across the racetrack entirely. And I believe, getting a look at it, it's Jimmy McKee. So McKee going to be involved on this one. Caution is out. Take a look back. It's an instant yellow flag as we are once again racing, and then we weren't. Here's a look back one more time here with Jimmy McKee in 20th as it all went down. As the drivers flew by, it looks like what happened here is the number 48 back of field ends up getting caught in the mix as the drivers come around. It doesn't really show you much of the good angle, so we'll bring it back one more time and show you. 20 seconds back as McKee ends up spinning into three and four, and as he slid, hopefully he didn't connect with anyone else. It looks like Kenny Brooks is also down into pit road as a result, and as McKee comes through, once again is going to be a slide right up, and that makes all the difference. So McKee going to end up working his way up the track, and that's with contact from Allen coming and stacking up with Ryan Potter and Kenny Brooks in the wall. Caution is out, and that's a quick look back with McKee going around sliding. Well, a lot of these guys, David, are really not... They, they still, even when we've been driving this track for 108 laps... Cautions still technically breed cautions, especially here at these short tracks. And this is a wide short track, but that just gives more opportunity to be more wide according to car width. You know, you could be you could be too wide, three wide, or maybe even four wide, and that's just gonna make every wreck bigger. Unfortunately, cautions have been pretty common in tonight's event relative to most others, and the nature of these short tracks. Excitement comes at a cost, so it's been an attrition-based night. Corey Blevins, matter of fact, the most recent retiree on the day. That leaves us with 21 drivers going back to Jacob Hom And Jacob, about 12 laps down as it stands, 20 left on the lead lap. So few, fewer and fewer, honestly, as the race has progressed. And we'll see whether or not these 20 are those that remain at the very end. We'll be going back to green with about 55 laps to go. Looks like it's going to be a clear perspective up in front for your leading man in Casey Heschel. Not much to worry about here for the number 49 as he leads in the opening day, 166. He's got the edge right now. And Chad Winstead up to seventh here for Scott Zellner. He drops back one spot in that very brief run. As such, maybe now Winstead going to have the minor advantage. One lap to green. And Casey Escher goes high. Adam Bosley goes down low. Half a lap to go till we get going here. Casey Heschel going to be the man who leads once again. He's now led three restarts, including this one, and is set to take us back to the green flag in command of this field. Coming through this time by the number 49, going to be on top of the board and getting us going. He's got the jump. Green flags out for Casey Heschel. Adam Bozzi right behind, and it's the number 49 on the move. And things are getting dicey here in the middle of the pack already as the 25 almost split it three. There goes Scott Zellner in the mix as well. They're going to try and push the issue now as everyone is still double file throughout this back pack. Everyone stays calm. No issue yet so far as Zellner going to split it three in the middle. And he'll make a pass to 33. As they're going to be three wide in the back and there's another rack and they save it. Oh, Ryan Potter. Almost caused another wreck, and they're going to save it again as things are getting dicey here in the Kenny back Brooks back is going to spin down the front straightaway. He gets it going. It's a 360. He's the only driver on the front stretch. We oh, stay green, but it's we Jeopardy. Stay green. DJ Stagner in the outside wall down the back straightaway in three and four. He will save it, and we still stay green. A full spin and contact for Stagner, sending him way back here. It's going to be now Toby Wedgwood working down to the bottom side on Stagner, way up top. Maybe DJ can keep it together here, but some troubles for the number 64. All the while, Kenny Brooks in jeopardy being put one lap down. Casey Heschel is coming and coming quick. Now going to be side-by-side -side Colton Gardner with Ryan Potter. And Potter's seen trouble for. He has no back bumper right now. He gets loose again, and it's going to wiggle down the back stretches he's got Stagner going low no choice for Ryan but to back out of the circumstance and he goes up topside 
you let them all by. And now Potter going to be down to 18th as you look once again at midfield. Lucas Lodato going to get by Ryan Hines. And 50 laps to go here. Things are shuffling out nicely for the front runners, but it's dicey everywhere else. And we are coming up on a lap or two as Hines is going to be quickly passed by Alan Cunman. Ryan Potter has absolutely been smacked around throughout the course of this race. And this late restart has probably been the worst of it. He is now one of the last cars still driving on the racetrack in the last position in timing and scoring. Only other car behind him is Kenny Brooks. And he's going to be our lap car coming up close to Casey Heschel as they go down the back straight away. Casey Heschel out to a pretty commanding lead. The furthest we've seen so far is Adam Bozzi and Kendall Kerr going to be the ones to battle side by side for second place. Number 21 battling with the 27 Adam Bozzi got to ring it around that outside lane try and make something work down the back straightaway as everyone else starts to fall back behind Chad Winstead goes to the inside of the 31 of Dylan Poteet as now Kendall Kerr will clear Adam Bozzi so now Winstead's going to be in the mix inside the top five. He continues to gain here. Mind you, he's on a much younger set of Goodyear rubber relative to everyone in front of him. And next up on the lineup, it's going to be Terry Brooks. And if anyone else can be a little quicker than Winstead, it could be Brooks, who's got an even younger set of rubber. He is going to be just behind this side-by-side -side battle and stands to benefit just as much, perhaps if not more, as we're going to look at our telemetry now for the driver in the number 23. You'll see exactly what he's doing, getting early on of the break and coasting through minor application of the pressure then he gets back on the throttle midway through the corner and you don't want to use up the brake salt too much and apply more heat to the tire knowing that he's on a younger stint he doesn't want to give away his advantage as much as of course possible you want to preserve the rubber there and right now that's exactly what Brooks is doing running in seventh just behind Scott Zellner and Chad Winstead who got up into fourth tier He's got a good chance to maybe make up a few more positions and get himself for the battle for the podium. Zellner able to pass the 31 of Pote. He will slide just in front, Chad Winstead. Now cutting up through the field, he will be to the inside of Adam Bazzi and the number 27. Here comes Zellner looking to be in the charge. As he, could gain, he gained so much time throughout the course of that lap. They're going to be right behind the 60 of Winstead. Help him get past Adam Bozzi. These two can make a three. They're going to have a charge for the lead. Terry Brooks now to the inside of Kenman and the number 88. As he tries to go around the outside of Pote, doesn't work. Chad Winstead playing blocker now as he gets past Adam Bozzi. And around the outside goes Zellner. They're going to be three wide in the back. It's Brooks, Pote, and Kenman. They're going to slide Still three wide as Terry Brooks slides into the side of the 33. They're now going to go back to two wide as Zellner makes the pass on Adam Bozzi. A battered and bruised Terry Brooks is going to lose both spots in that fight. And as such, he's going to put himself now in the eighth position. Not as good as it was before for the number 23. And he stands to gain more. And of course, you can just get back. Easier said than done as Brooks is going to fly back just a bit. Furthermore, Ryan Hines now going to be there with Jimmy McKee up to the top side. McKee is going to get things going. And Ryan Hines does as well. Looks like now Hines going to be with DJ Stagner. DJ making a nice recovery back up into the bottom half of the top 15 and he's got himself there in 13th now as the drivers come across the stripe yet again Stagner making the move gets a pass and now he's got 13th almost all to himself Ryan Hines in the dead on number 25 tries to get through but another wiggle for Colton Gardner in the back of the field and it looks like Gardner gets things going that was he and Andrew Baker who came together however all is well and they'll get going once more up in front Casey Heschel coming up more and more in the lap of Kenny Brooks, but no major gains with 37 laps to go. All the while, your battle for the podium, it's still getting a little more intense. And Alan Cumman now going to find himself on the tail end of the top five. Maybe up next for Cunman is a pass on Adam Bozzi. Their gap is only 15 one hundredths of a second here.
So Cunman going to find himself now ahead of Adam Bozzi, as we mentioned, the battle that progresses. You see Bozzi there. Brooks going to be just behind. And then from there, how about a driver who's gained quite big on this run? Lucas Lodato, who's back up at eighth. He was involved with two cautions on the day already. And even though he found himself in a lot of trouble with those circumstances, he is back in the mix and not at all a bad place to be. Connor of course, not in the front of the field. We saw Connor Holton briefly. However, now Dylan Poteet side by side with Brad Crest. Side by side, they will go indeed. And now Lucas Lodano gained just a little bit more. McKee finds himself in the 10th spot on the previous lap. However, he will cycle up to 9th and come through in the single digits here. And as it stands, we only now have a total of just about... Oh, trouble! I think he may have saved it. We almost had a spin DJ stacker made contact with somebody they're going to save it through one and two stagner doing a battle with the 52 as things are starting to heat up again as we have our own little mini packs throughout the field and i believe they saved it no caution lap 135 so 32 laps to go this time by as we come down to the tail end of this race. Casey Heschel going to come across the line once more looking for win number two and Kendall Kerr at the line is now in second here Chad Winstead up to third, and Scott Zellner up to fourth. So now your new tires are slowly but surely making up more positions here. Kendall Kerr might be the next to fall victim. As you can see, Winstead almost poised for back-to-back -back podiums, but the question is, if he gets the opportunity to go for the lead, what will he do with it? In the past four laps, you'll see the gap to the leader and how it is slowly but surely Slightly gained of only six one hundredths of a second. However, now he's being held up by Kendall Kerr. Is this the difference between chasing a win and not? That remains to be seen. Winstead's got to put the pedal down and get by this number 21. And try to make a move. Maybe now there's a chance with 29 laps to go to get this pass over with and go on to the next driver. There goes Winstead down to the bottom side. But Kendall Kerr going to defend. Not Caution. much else you can do. Caution is out and that will halt Chad Chad Winstead's run as I believe Andrew it Baker might have involved someone in the back. Baker going to be involved. Number 33 going to go around immediately. 138 laps in. And Baker gets loose on his own. No contact except almost getting Toby Wedgwood. And the caution will fly as a result. So Baker going to get loose on his own and bring out the yellow flag. We are once again going down a pit road for many drivers. That's the move. And pit road is busy as we once again take a look at your leaders. Well, David, this is interesting. Now almost no one staying out besides K uh, Casey Eschel and Kendall Kerr. And, and you see, I wonder what the plan is here, especially for a guy like Kendall Kerr, as he was about to get passed by Chad Winstead. And uh, he's talking with Casey right now, and they're both a little bit dumbfounded as everyone behind them comes into pit road. They're the only two to stay out. Let's see what they do. Sticking with the strategy, they both stay out, and this might be an issue, David. So now going to be a difference in strategy for Casey Heschel and Kendall Kerr, and we saw what happened before. I don't quite know whether or not this is the right decision. Staying out with 26 to go, not as much in terms of time. The laps will be much lower in count. Not going to be anywhere easier than it was before for Heschel and for Kerr. That might be the chance to go for the win. Down the drain. Remains to be seen if they can hold on here. Casey Heschel up ahead. Ken Loker second. And Allen Cunman in third. The top three. But for Cunman, for the first time since the earlier stage of this race, the first half, honestly, he's back in prime position to maybe go win this thing. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's kind of tough, these two leading here. They were communicating, and they said that, you know, we might have to stay out here because they thought they felt good. Whole field going to come down pit road. And now they look to be in trouble. So Casey Heschel, if he wants to win this race, has to have the restart of his life and pray that Kendall Kerr can play blocker to the guys on new tires. Right now, time to figure out whether or not it's the move to go for the lead for coming now. Can he even help out his blacktop racing teammate and Kendall Kerr? Is that possible? Perhaps not. I don't think in this situation, given the big disparity in tire. And right now, for the number 88 Red Sox machine, 
back up in third, the highest spot he's run all throughout the night, ever since about lap number 60. Tell you this much, since we got a little bit of time here, one lap to green, here's a look at our MLB scores for the entirety of the night opening day here for the majority of teams and most games have already been wrapped up today the angels and orioles played the first game of the season it was the orioles winning 11 to 3 the giants and padres played san diego win 6 to 4 blue jays take an 8-2 victory over the tampa bay rays and the yankees stretch out a one-run victory over the houston astros pittsburgh pirates one-run victory marlins they're going to be the losers 6 to 5 twins and royals 4 to 1 tigers 1 to nothing and the reds 8 to 2 while the Los Angeles Dodgers get the final win of the day so far, 7-1. to one. Green flags out for Casey Heschel. He's looking for the next win of the night. And they're three wide for second. There goes Scott Zellner. He'll take it low and rush oh, down flipping. the back straight. Goodman turns Kendall Kerr, and they're going to stack it up behind. That is the field. Everyone is destroyed from top to bottom. They're still banging into each other. Caution is out. And it's about the worst incident we've seen all night in Kern County. Decimation from Bakersfield. Take a look back here and we will figure out what happened. Let's recollect ourselves and try to understand what we're looking at. David, that was one of the biggest wrecks I've seen at a short track in a recent memory. Not only that, recent FTF, uh, FTN history. And that was the entire field. And it started, I believe, from about 10th place on back, and those guys were just stacking it up, and no one had anywhere to go. Kendall Kerr, Adam Bozzi, Brad Crest, Dylan Pote immediately involved. Then from there, you're going to take a look at Alan Cunman, then Terry Brooks, Scott Wheeler, Lucas Lodato, Chad Winstead. If you can keep a count of names, guys, I think that was over 10 drivers involved. I think if not more, that is at least half the field. I would think it collected more than that. That was just a quick head count from the replay we just showed you. Well, I can't believe that some of these guys were able to make it through and cut their way through because some of these guys were right smack in the middle and able to get by. That is one of the biggest wrecks I've ever seen, and I'm surprised we still have a field. 20 laps to go. It's a stretch very short from here on out. Short one, of course, coming down to the final 20 laps. That's 10 miles. The difference between here and Victory Lane is a trip to the local shopping center in terms of traditional distances. But here in Kern County, that could be a lifetime for Casey Heschel. Old tires or not, he is still up there. Scott Zellner is due to pounce. He made that three wide move, which... Didn't send us into all calamity, but he definitely barely got away from it. Now you gotta wonder. Does Casey actually even have a chance to hold on here? Is it wishful thinking to say the old tires will hang on? Or is Scott Zellner the man up next to make it all work out? Well, I'm going to tell you, David, it's going to be no easy feat to hold off Scott Zellner and Chad Winstead. Two on fresh tires, and they're going to be the ones to try and battle it out. The fact that a lot of these guys, almost all of them, pitted now. A good chunk of them got in that wreck, and so that slings about half the field. Casey Heschel is going to be in some deep trouble if he can't find a way to play blocker or, or not get the restart of his life. One lap to green. It's going to be a total of 18 laps left that we're on right now. 17 to go and we return. And I'll tell you this much as we come through this time by. We're going to crank it up briefly courtesy of our friends at TrackCams22.com. TrackCams for Gorman's providing the wonderful onboard cameras for tonight's event here in Kern County. And we're going to get loud with some of the best cameras on the iRacing market. For more information about iRacing's leading broadcast cameras, check out TrackCams22.com or Facebook.com forward slash track cams for more information green flag out this time by with 17 laps to go Heschel on the move let's crank it up with track cams 22.com
Caution is out with 14 laps to go. Another incident here, and the reason being it looks like some trouble. Back of field, we are once again under yellow here, Alex, as we try to get a look. Is there anything on your end that we see? Well, David, we had some trouble there with the 33 in the back half of the field, and things are getting heated again. Andrew Baker going to be one of the causes of that as he was talking over the radio. He's going to be the one to spin around. I believe it was going to be down the front stretch. Yes, it was off of four, of which he spun, just got back into the gas a little too hard, round went the rears, and Ryan Potter was the one who finished the job. Just like that, caution is out once more. Baker going to be involved big. You see him go spinning and damage on the backside going to be clearer than anywhere else on the car. We are now down to the very final stretch of this one. 12 laps remaining and once again a big incident here with the dozen to do it. You know David Bell asking about ARCA breaks tonight and I'll tell you this much, just not a lot of room on the track. I think that's been the biggest trouble for everyone unfortunately and since it's of course our very first trip to Kern County, doesn't make it any easier. Maybe if we get another other opportunity we're seeing a lot of first time tracks on the schedule this season we just went to montreal we have of course kern county right now next up from there you got chicagoland and the rest of the schedule is familiar but it's a bit of a newfound stretch of this circuit in terms of what we've seen on the championship tour not going to be easy for these guys but they've only got nine green flag laps left so it's going to come down to this year and winstead is up ahead chad winstead and Terry Brooks, drivers we don't typically know for winning at the Ovals. Granted, Winstead's most recent win was at a left-turning circuit. I think Brooks now has to show what he's got. This could be his first win. It could be for Winstead, his first of the season. And a chance to break out here as we come across the stripe again. Looks like caution going to be a bit longer than we anticipated. It will then instead be eight green flag laps of racing. And if you got a driver you're rooting for, make sure to let us know. It's the Atlanta number 60 up at the top of the board. For Atlanta, alongside three other Major League Baseball teams, they will start their seasons tomorrow. The Braves and the Phillies, the Brewers and the New York Mets, they will start their campaigns tomorrow. As it stands, it looks like it's going to be three games being played in regular innings, extra innings for one. The Texas Rangers and Chicago Cubs are 3-3, three, three, middle of the 10th inning. It looks like the World Series champions of last year fighting hard and fighting early in their campaign. Cleveland has a 1-0 lead over the Oakland Athletics, and Colorado is one down to the Arizona Diamondbacks as the Red Sox play two runs on the Seattle Mariners. They're ahead of Seattle in the bottom of the third. That's your final extension of our brief baseball overview for tonight's event. The opening day, 166, might come to a close within the next eight laps. We still have a chance to go to overtime territory here, Alex, but I think all things being said and done soon, we're going to see the very final moments of this race with Chad Winstead coming through this time by to see the green flag. Here we go again. Winstead takes the green. Back on the move. The number 60 gets the jump. Chad Winstead off and away as the field looks to stack behind. They're going to get three wide with the 64 of DJ Stagner and the 31 of Dylan Pote. Here comes Zellner. He's three wide up the Destroyed. middle. Destroyed! Here comes Terry Tony Wedgwood Brooks. is up and over, and he has lost the front end. Caution is out, and the 52 is decimated. We're seeing new ways to wreck race cars here at Kern County, and there is another yellow just shy. We've got 10 laps to go, and God, up and into the air with the Dodgers 52, and that'll probably be the end to his race. Oh, Toby Wedgwood, he's gonna lose everything, gets loose on his own, and the barrier not kind to him. Kern County, not a NASCAR sanctioned track with the National Series, no safer barrier. He's gonna plow in, and even at that lower speed, it's gonna end his race. Toby Wedgwood, how about that? Six laps to go, I think, we might be headed into green-white checkered territory. We are very close. We're on the bleeding edge of that, as a matter of fact, here. It could be a two-lap shootout. It might be three at the most. We have come down to the very, very final moment of this race, and it's going to be not a guarantee if we even get multiple green flag laps from here. 
five laps to go. 162 laps in. Terry Brooks, Allen Cummins, second and third, and we are set to go again. Winstead looking to close out the day as a winner. Terry Brooks hoping to make the upset work out. Alan Cummins, who started on the pole position, he's back in the top three. Maybe he'll do something daring to get by. And Casey Heschel, old tires and all, has maintained himself in fourth. Hasn't fallen all too far back, and now everyone going to be shifting up one lap to green. It will be a three-lap shootout. As we get double filed behind it, the pace car, David, these guys ready to get growing, ready to get going, and green once again. And these guys fighting it out for the win here in Kern County. It's been an exciting race so far. And it's going to have an exciting ending, to say the least. Chad Winstead versus Terry Brooks and Alan Kunman. Who's going to walk away with the race victory? Pace car going to dive into pit road as we get ready to go green here. Open the final restart here from Kern County. And it's a great restart for both of the guys in the front row. Chad Winstead going to have himself up high, but Terry Brooks is not going to make it easy. Coming down the back straightaway, two and a half laps to go. It's going to be Brooks down to the bottom side. Coming across the start-finish line this time through, Terry remains even side by side. It's Winstead who gets the jump, and he'll take the race lead. Scott Zellner going to be side by side with Alan Cumman here. It looks like for Zellner, he might have a chance to take third. If we come through three and four in one piece, the white flag will wave, and this race will be official that it is one lap to go Winstead out in front and Brooks right behind him now Terry's only got one more chance to dive into turn three and maybe make the pass looking for Winstead's back bumper looks like he won't dive it through Chad Winstead looking for his first short track win in his career beats off the wall and wins in Kern County the Atlanta Braves number 60 is the champion of opening day. What an exciting race, David. He comes home with the wind shadow. Winstead, usually in my P. Oh, we have a couple of wrecks down into the pit rails of pit road. But Chad Winstead, usually my pick week in and week out. And he comes home in victory lane. How about that? Winstead gets it done and begins to burn down the house. The number 60 looking for an opportunity in our first ever trip to this track, much like it was at Mid-Ohio several seasons ago. A pioneer in the Highline Racing League and wins again to the brand new circuit. Checkered flag out for Winstead and he will burn it down. Celebrations have concluded for Chad Winstead and that entire number 60 crew. So close to a victory last week in terms of position. And tonight, it all works out, Alex. How about that for Chad Winstead as he gets it done over Terry Brooks, then in second, and Scott Zellner, then in third. Alan Cummin, position number four, and Casey Heschel, then in fifth. DJ Stagner, sixth. Dylan Poteet, seventh, and Jimmy McKee in eighth. Lucas Lodato, ninth overall, recovering after being involved in two cautions, and Adam Bozzi rounding out the top 10. Going on from 11th, it's Kenny Brooks, then Colton Gardner, Ryan Hines, and Andrew Baker, then Connor Holden, Kendall Kerr, Toby Wedgwood is the last guy who, oh, sorry, no, Kendall Kerr is the last guy on the lead lap, then followed by Toby Wedgwood, Ryan Potter, Brad Cress. And Scott Wheeler Jr. following on the rest of the people who did not come close to finishing this race. Jacob Hom, Corey Blevins, Caleb Morrissey, Dylan Wedgwood, Ty Smith, Tyler Hampton, and Michael Deitch, who did not start. Tonight, all the calamity in Kern County from start to finish coincided with a great race for strategy and for, of course, several different teams, several different drivers tonight one of success the first of which of course gonna be the number one of scott zellner your defending champion not a bad night at all for this crew and for zellner making it back inside the top three at the end of the day zellner's gonna be standing by with you alex right now let's bring in our third place finisher 
Well, Scott Zellner, you come home in that third place position from the inaugural race here at Kern County Raceway. Tell me how you're feeling. Um, <laughs> I don't know, a couple of mixed emotions. Um, before the race started, if you would have told me I would have finished top 10, I would have taken that as a win. Um, but qualified really well and was able to to stay up front. So now I'm a little disappointed with third place. Um, choose choose cone really uh, was not my strong suit tonight. I, I chose the wrong line a few times when I was behind people on old tires. So really wish I would have been battling with Chad for the win. I think I had the speed to do it, but um, just kind of got stuck in traffic. And that's what happens on a short track. You just can't pass. We saw a lot of great racing action here from Kern County. I think from a broadcasting perspective, when we weren't wrecking and we were green, it provided great racing, sort of Richmond-esque, where you can use multiple different lanes and, you know, it kind of goes on to the rest of the race. How were your thoughts on the rest of this race, especially the green portions? Um, I, th- I thought it went, went pretty well. Um, I'm probably the last person you want to ask if I had fun on a short track because I hate them. But, um... Just kind of really had to try to manage the right front of the car. Uh, So after you were done with your braking zone, you kind of just had to roll the entire way through the center. So uh, it's pretty accurate analysis. I would say it was pretty much just a larger Richmond. Um, The racing was was good, I thought, up front. Um, I know a lot of guys had a lot of trouble in the back, which is common for this. But, you know, all in all, I think uh, from my perspective, um, the racing was a lot better than expected. Well, I'm here to say that tonight's race, I thought, was really good. We actually got to race. Well, you come home in that third place position. Is there anything else you'd like to say or anyone else you'd like to thank? Yeah, as always, just want to thank my teammates at Four Horsemen Racing and uh, all my family that watches each and every week. And uh, for you guys putting on the broadcast and everybody that runs this league, uh, Kendall, Adam, Toby. Um, And I'm just thankful that we're going into a... The remaining part of the schedule has some intermediate racetracks. So see if I can't uh, get a win before the season's over, because I've I've uh, had a lot of thoughts to just hang it up this season. It's not gone well at all. It's the uh, champion's curse. Well, hopefully trying to come back from that one. Good rebound here from third. Congratulations on that. And thank you so much for your time. Thanks. But Scott Zellner on the move, going to move on indeed to our second place driver, Brooks, who's proven quick with these short tracks once again with the podium, and it's time second, just one spot away from victory and a quarter of a second behind. Terry going to be standing by with you, Alex. We'll bring our second place driver in right now. Terry Brooks so close to another victory here in the Premier Series, just a couple of tenths short of Chad Winstead. Tell us and walk us through how you got to second. I just missed some wrecks. The tire, the tire strategy played out. Uh, I think me and Chad were in a good cycle on the tires. I think there was a couple guys that come out of the pits ahead of us on two. Um, and I just, I didn't think that was the right call. And then there was a couple of pileups. We got lucky. We missed them, but just stayed clear, was able to maintain our track position. And that led us to the front and I, I have to give hands off to Casey. he, uh, we called him. He would the the last restart when he was leading. I think he was out there on 121 lap tires, and I'm like, he's driving his wheel off to try to keep this thing up here. He done a great job. And me and Chad put on a heck of a show for the end. I hate I got free, and then he cut me off pretty hard going into one and two, and it was all I could do not to bump him. Um, but it was a great race. But I understand you got to do what you got to do on a short track. And speaking of which, when we were green, I thought the racing action that we had was great. Sort of almost like smaller yet wider Richmond, as you can see the multiple lanes being used. What were your thoughts on that? That's the one thing we were talking about is when it was green flag, it was great racing. Side by side, you, I mean, it was fantastic all the way through the field. And you could make moves and the tire strategies worked out well to when you pitted and how you could move through the field. Um, and I, I think just a little bit more of this group at short tracks like this, where there's room to kind of run off. If you make a little mistake, you got room to finagle. I think we can make short track racing really good in this series. So I, I'm looking forward to it and tracks like this again. 
Well, I'm looking forward to watching more racing here from the Premier Series, especially at short tracks after what was a pretty good race when it went green. Now, you get second place, just one spot short of the victory here from Kern County, but that's going to prove you well for points in the championship scenario. Now, you've got second. What are your points on the board looking like for a run at the championship? I don't know exactly till we hit our drop races. Uh, I missed uh, the first race of the year. So once that cycles through, that'll probably give me a big bump because I'm sitting at a big goose egg. And when everybody else drops, uh, I'll be able to kind of balance everything out. And we'll see if we got a shot to take this Westlake uh, Royal Building Products vehicle to maybe a championship. Well, once again, congratulations on second place, Terry Brooks. You come home in second. Congratulations for that. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for all y'all do to help put on a great show. We really appreciate it. But Terry Brooks on the move, a driver oh so close to coming through for the win. I'll tell you this much. Keep an eye out for him in these short tracks as Chad Winstead finessed the strategy all night long. And I think that's the key to victory for this number 60 crew. Two consecutive seasons in the victory lane. Doesn't look like the top spot missed you for too long this time around. Back on top at Kern County. And the Atlanta number 60 comes home with a win. How about that, Chad Winstead? You're back with us again, this time on the top spot. Yes, sir. It was a good opening day for me. Uh, unfortunately, the Braves don't start until tomorrow because of some rain. But... um. But yeah, what a race. Uh, just stayed clean the whole night and uh, tried to put myself in a good position. And just kind of played out and had a chance to battle there for the win with Terry. I had a good time battling with him and uh, and Scott up front. and Just super thankful to finally get a win. I uh, had two second place finishes in a row, I believe, the last two weeks. And I uh, got over the hump. And it looks like tonight finally breaking through and getting over the hump as you say it. The big thing that we noticed was working the strategy game to get inside the top five and going from there when nobody else was on the same set of rubber. And by the time everyone went down to pit road, you had the advantage. So what was it like working your way through there tonight? You found yourself starting in 26th. Our graphic doesn't say it on the screen, but you are the hardest charger as well. And you came from the back of the field. You started dead last. And it's a last to first challenge victory. Yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely feel accomplished after uh, after doing that because I had, I definitely botched qualifying. I thought I was going to have a really good shot at the pole after practice. I think I was P two, and um, was really looking forward to qualifying, and then looped it coming into one and two, and I just at that point just decided it wasn't meant to be and parked it, and um, figured I'd start from the back and try to avoid chaos. But yeah, I mean. The, the tire strategy, I mean, I saw people weren't coming down pit road, and I just got off cycle to try to gain some track position, and it ended up working out in the end, and I'm thankful that it did. And all goes well for the number 60 crew getting the win here in Kern County. Now, uh, a few races where we go to brand new tracks for the Highline Racing League, but up next, it's then going to be... Las Vegas, so that's a very familiar intermediate track, not as radically different as Montreal or Kern County. You've been looking good at these races very recently, helping out with the points gamble as well, and tell you this much, heading into Sin City up next, you're finding yourself top 10 in the points. What can you do to maybe keep on improving here? Yeah, hopefully this win shoots me up into contention. Um, I feel pretty confident at mile and a half tracks and, and, and Vegas in particular. Uh, so I don't know if I've ran Vegas in this in the Xfinity car or not, but um, I feel I feel pretty good. I mean, I've got some momentum from the last three races on my side, and hopefully, if I can keep it clean, I'll be in contention again for the win. I just I just want to finish the season out strong. I had some really bad luck a couple of races this season, uh, getting taken out and whatnot after possibly battling for the win. So I know in my mind that I should be competing for the championship, and hopefully, uh, we can keep this momentum and and get back up to the front. A great way to kickstart getting that momentum back for the 60 crew and a win on opening day for most teams. There's only four playing tomorrow for the first time, but it looks like you'll win before the Braves do. Chad Winstead, checkered flag in Kern County. You got any final shout outs you'd like to send? Yeah, shout out to you guys for putting this broadcast on and um, everybody that, that raced clean tonight. I know, you know, short track racing here is kind of brutal sometimes. There's some unhappy people <laughs> out there, so... Hopefully we can all shake hands, sing kumbaya, and move on for next week. Um, 
thank you to my wife that's that's watching and thanks for uh body for the the brave scheme for tonight go bravos and hopefully they can bring home the dub tomorrow Looking for the win, Chad Winstead gets it first for the Atlanta crew. It's the number 60 Atlanta Braves machine getting it done here in Bakerfield. Thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. What a celebration it was tonight, of course, looking at all the action from Kern County, our very first trip here in the Highline Racing League, an event unlike any other we've seen with this series. It's a half-mile circuit Almost a little bit more like Richmond and Iowa, but we're heading back to the more conventional track from here on out. And I think for a lot of drivers, they'll be a bit happier seeing that we return to the norm with Las Vegas up next. Before we head back to Nevada, as we're here in California, Alex, we're actually heading eastbound this time. Any final thoughts to wrap up the night? Well, I thought tonight's race was fantastic when we were able to get green flag racing. The amount of passing and racing we saw, especially using that second lane, was truly incredible. And I personally believe that Kern should come back on the schedule next season. I'd love to see this short track back once again. Our very first taste of the action here in Kern County. Chad Winstead getting it done. And as always, you're watching a presentation of the Highline Racing League tonight. The opening day, 166 in Kern County. As this is a special presentation of the Westlake Royal Building Products Premier Series. If you enjoyed tonight's action, make sure to check out the Fireball Talks NASCAR YouTube channel. Leave a like on the stream and subscribe. I've been David Detroit alongside Alexander Balderas covering all of tonight's racing. Thank you all for watching once again. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and that you have a fantastic night. We hope to see you next on Saturday as it's going to be a doubleheader with the Velocity Online Racing League and Saturday Night Thunder. Hope to see you then and there and we also hope you have a fantastic night.